an American dad by the name of Sterling Backus 3D printed a full-scale Lamborghini Aventador inspired supercar in his own backyard. Using a simple 3D printer he bought off Amazon. This long process of 3D printing a Lamborghini took 4 years and all came about because his 11 year old son who always chose the Lamborghini Aventador when playing car racing games and one day he simply asked his dad can we build one of those? It's interesting we were playing a video game funny enough my son and I and uh, it's a video game on an Xbox called Forza where you're racing cars. And uh, he made the quip that we got into a Lamborghini Aventador in the game and he thought that was a fantastic car and so he asked me if we could build one. Now there's a bit more to it than just a dad deciding to build a Lamborghini because his son asked him to. Dr. Sterling Backus is not only a gearhead who loves working on cars, but he also has degrees in physics and engineering and a pioneer in ultra-fast laser technologies. So it's something of an understatement to say he's good with numbers and technical stuff. Sterling said he had a budget of 20,000 US dollars. He achieved this budget by sourcing parts from junkyards and doing all the work himself. He started off by making his own chassis by cutting and welding tubular steel. Once the frame was complete, he installed an LS1 V8 engine with twin turbos from a 2003 Corvette and it's connected to an inverted Porsche 911 6-speed manual which should make around 550 to 600 horsepower. From there he started 3D printing small sections of body panels and gluing them together and attaching them to the frame. Get the full glory of it when it's out, um, out of the barn and uh, the new uh, quarter panels and side skirts are on. Um, so yeah, out in, the, out in the light, she's looking pretty spiffy. At this stage, he ran into a big problem with the 3D printed segments as they would melt from the heat of the sun. So he decided to wrap the segments in carbon fiber to help retain their shape and add extra strength. Once a whole panel or area was complete and fitted to the frame, it was then removed and wrapped in more layers of carbon fiber to make it look like one complete panel and not just segments. To achieve this, the panels were covered in carbon fiber and epoxy and then vacuum sealed, which forces the epoxy over the whole part and encapsulates it. Once the epoxy cures, the surface becomes all rough, so they all needed to be sanded down. This process is repeated one or two more times to achieve the end result of a complete one-piece panel. Sterling ended up 3D printing all the body panels, front and rear bumpers, tail lights, headlights, air vents and even parts of the dashboard and center console. To give you an idea of some of the time frames it took to print these parts, the rear bumper took 1.5 weeks to complete and the front bumper took 2 weeks to complete. But on average, each panel took about one week to complete. There are 1,000 3D printed pieces on the car with a total print time of about 6,000 hours. That's about 250 days of non-stop printing. Once all the panels and parts were completed on the car, it was sanded down and painted with clear coat. Sterling left the car in this clear coated carbon fiber look for a while. And even in this semi unfinished state, it still looked really good.
but the car was still looking rough, so eventually he did a lot of bondo work on the car and tried fixing up the gaps on the body panels before painting it white. Once painted, it now started to look like a real Lamborghini, although the windshield did not look right. Sterling told me, Lamborghini windshields can be very expensive, so he used a cut down windshield from a 2008 Toyota Sienna minivan. The final plan for the car is to simply keep it and use it, but Sterling also displays it at car shows and does presentations at schools to inspire kids in the STEM fields. Here is a walk around the final car with Sterling explaining some of the features. There she is, out of the garage. She's looking pretty sweet. So uh, we'll do a little walk around here. Uh, it ain't perfect, but you know what? I really don't care because it just looks really cool. <laughs> I can even tell that the paint is a different color <laughs> on some of the panels. But you know, oh well, until we get it professionally painted, that's the way she's gonna look. So yeah, she's a little hillbilly. She's a little ghetto. But that's okay. She's, you know, out of the garage, in the sunshine. She's running. She's driving. So, so I get a lot of questions. Um, is it done? <laughs> it's not even close. Uh, most car guys will know what I mean because uh, it's, uh, it's never really done. Um, but we're trying to get the goal of having it licensed by this spring. I don't know if I'll make it. I've never made any of the deadlines except for myself other than being able to show up to car shows. So, um, let's, uh, let's see some video of her, uh, driving around. In case you were wondering about copyright infringement for making a Lamborghini inspired replica, the 3D printed parts and finished car are based on the Lamborghini Aventador, but Sterling changed each panel significantly to add his own design flair. In addition, the replica car is a one-off project and not for sale. Plus, Lamborghini themselves did a story on his replica car and the love and devotion he has for Lamborghinis. Lamborghini also donated some parts for his car, such as headlights, dash and steering wheel, all with Lamborghini badging on them. But Sterling said he won't badge the car a Lamborghini. I did a similar story on Ken Imhoff, who spent 17 years hand making a full metal Lamborghini in his basement. And the most common thing said in the comments section was why waste all that time and effort? Why not just save up and buy a real one? Well, Sterling told me that's an easy question to answer. He said, car builders will understand. For the rest, it's the passion of creating a car with your own two hands and driving it. There are a few better feelings in the world. Sterling started the project in 2018 and had the car painted and pretty much finished by November 2022. The replica is still a bit rough around the edges, although he plans to spend more time fine tuning it further and improving the fit and finish of the car such as making sure all the panels line up and the spacings of the panels are more accurate. But for the most part, the car is finished. 
Even Leonardo da Vinci spent years reworking and retouching the Mona Lisa during his travels, and even went as far as to change the details of the Mona Lisa's face and appearance over periods of repainting. So in other words, perfection takes time. You just need to be patient and wait for the master to finish his work. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.